Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. Um, today we're going to be working on the big screen and we're going to be changing the architecture a little bit. We're going to be changing how it works. We're going to be bringing a web server into it so we can actually poke events onto the screen. And some of that requires a bit of explanation and I did want to show the architecture up front. Not just of the big screen but how we want to interact with it in, in future episodes. So basically what we're going to do first of all is imagine the big screen is a program and I want this box to be that process, the, the Python process. Um, some of this is going to, the reasons behind some of these things I will touch on in the future because we're going to look at multi-threading in Python, we're going to look at async and we're going to look at, at proper processes versus those three options that you've got to processing. Um, and at the moment, the code as was last episode is just a massive blurge of code in one file so we're going to change that. Um, basically what I want things people to think about is that there's going to be a, a module or there's going to be this control module which really is going to be uh, the most important thing in the Pi game which is the main event loop. Now Pi game itself has a queue so we're just going to mock that down here this is the Pi game oh I thought I had my stuff sorted my font sorted I like my fonts to be um, handwritten um, I like my fonts to be handwritten because then it looks like it's thoughts it looks less official than if it's if it's this font I, I, I like this to be a flexible living document uh, so basically what this is going to do, this is going to pull from there uh, and it's going to basically say every time there's something on the Pi game queue it's going to actually action that event, it's going to do things with it. So instead of having all my code in here, I want there to be a concept of screens. Okay, See, I've just lost that font complete now. So screens and actually more importantly this is the, going to be the current screen. Okay, And because there may be other screens that are um, lying around waiting to be used. Okay? Uh, so other screens. And the idea is that currently there may be more than one of these in scope, but they're not running. So at any point in time, I meant to actually copy that as well, any point in time, this main loop is going to call render on the current screen. So any events coming in, it's going to say, I, I want you to render the current screen. And the reason that's kind of useful is that actually it can call render on more than one screen and it can layer the screens. So if I think on the first episode I actually had my custom big screen up, I'm going to replace that and it may be that you have multiple screens going on at the same time. We're also going to talk about optimizations on the rendering, which means that this thing will work more efficiently, you'll still hit quite a good FPS. Um, by not rendering every component of every single sub-screen at the same time. The main thing is here that there's a main screen. We're also going to be event bringing events in. So these screens will have an interface and the, the main things they're going to have on this interface are going to be render and they're going to have a handle, uh, a handle event interface as well where some events will get passed into that current screen. And we'll sort of show how that works in a moment. So this will be the basic layout of the Pi game. Basically, you have stuff being fired at this all the time from the OS. Uh, the main things that are here are key presses. Uh, Apologise if you can hear the wind. It is really blowing a gale today. Really quite heavy wind. Um, and these are uh, key presses and also mouse events. And you actually get an awful lot of events. If you actually print off every event, every time your mouse goes over, basically you have every time your mouse moves, you basically have a mouse uh, a mouse in new position event. Uh, I also want to start thinking eventually, again this is the process, I think the process isn't in there, I was thinking about there may actually be uh, a JSON or a YAML config. That uh, I say all YAML because I do like uh, being able to put comments on anything. And then that's going to come in and it's going to be loaded by the main loading component. So that makes me a nice little Pi game system. Uh, usually that's where I stop, but we're going to bring in a web server. So the web server is actually going to sit inside the Python process, but it's not going to sit exactly um, in the main event loop. It's actually going to have its own thread. So um, let's throw that on there as a little box in the bottom. So this is a separate thread to the main event loop. This main event loop is this thread up here, and this up here is the display thread. Now I don't want lots of threads. The great thing about the web loop 
is that it's mostly going to be asleep because it's going to be waiting for a web net socket, going to handle that net socket, and it's going to go away. It's not going to have to be responding to a lot of things. Um, and that web if the server is going to interact with the current screen via the Pi game queue. So it's actually going to make events and it's going to pass those onto the Pi game queue. And then this and the next time around will pick those up and and interact with them, do whatever they are. Be be like, I want to change screen, I want to put a message up, or other things. Um, to do this, we are going to need a little bit of inter-thread communication. So I'm going to have a module here. It's going to be called. Um, it's going to be have a bit of a strange name. It's going to be called the Clax. Now, if you're a Tay Pratchett lover. You might recognise the Clax as a where a, a kind of semaphore type system they'd implemented. So I'm going to use this to pass information between these two threads. Um, it's going to be semi-thread safe in that you're going to set a variable that's either there or not. Really, it's just going to be used for flags. But I'm going to have a couple of uh, variables just so I'm not using globals. So the Clax basically be read by by sort of both these threads at the same time. But I'm not going to use it to pass messages like oh do this do that. And that's going to go via the event queue. Uh, we're not going to have many of these. There is the exit button that comes in. I'm just putting them there for the moment. Now, again, uh, this is this is an, uh, an application architecture at this point, but I would like to show you guys very quickly how I'm actually thinking about a bit more than that. This web server won't be open to the outside world. So the idea is this is going to be APIs. So coming in here are going to be um, JSON-based API queries, requests, whatever. But I'm not going to open up on the internet. If I do open it up, then basically what I'll have is I'll have an engine Xbox uh, engine Xbox over here and then I'll also have probably a home engine Xbox so this will be my cloud one in the internet and then that will forward onto the home and then that may or may not forward onto there maybe don't really know the point is that that's all future put my JSON based APIs coming in um, I will be able to interact with this from other scripts. So other scripts, other processes will be running and be able to poke message onto the web server, say, hey, put this on the big screen, change what's on the big screen. But to do it from my browser, Postman, whatever I want to do. However, there are some things that I want the screens to render. So one of the things I'd like to do is show my current number of subscribers, which is currently still at six. So that's wonderful. See if we can get that, you know, maybe to seven. That'd be really nice. So if you haven't subscribed, think about that. Go click it. Um, basically, though, interacting with things like YouTube and Google services is slow. I don't want to be doing that on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. I want to cache the result. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to have another script over here, which is going to be my mini YouTube checker service. And to be honest with you, I'm only going to check it once every 6, 12 hours. Uh, so that's going to run on a cron event. Um, so a nice cron. Like, keep it nice and simple. And it's going to dump its output into a um, a little JSON file. Now, technically, it's not a JSON file uh, because it it will be lots of lines of JSON elements. So I think there's a standard called streaming JSON or something like that. It's going to be basically that, where you're going to have a JSON object, a JSON object, a JSON object, but it's not got an array around it and it doesn't got commas. So you just basically read a line and that line is JSON. A little bit naughty, not strictly a JSON file. I say that because we're going to talk about things being strict in a moment, like, well, I say a moment, probably another episode about APIs. So these things will be able to interact and say, hey, what is the last line of this file? Get me information from that file. So, And then it can monitor, saying, has the file updated? Has the file stamp on the file changed? If not, don't worry about it, don't change the screen. So that optimizes the rendering of these screens. So we're beginning to get a little bit of an architecture going on here. The other thing I want to be able to do is probably, uh, again, a future thing, is a nice Discord bot. Now, I don't want to build the Discord bot into my screen framework. We'll build the Discord bot as a little Python bot. It'll get some messages here. They will then sometimes decide to poke in over here, say, hey, something's happened on Discord, ping it on the big screen. Again, I could pull from Slack or Teams or anything else, other messaging services. Could do an email bot, whatever it's going to be. But this is going to buffer my inputs into my, my, my process, which is separate. 
Now both these things, all three things, will be Python, but the main thing is they'll run a separate processes, so they won't interact with each other except for via these loosely coupled APIs, which means that I'm, they're able to run on separate cores and I don't have any issues with the uh, Python interpreter thread. Um, so what's basically going to happen is this will run as fast as it can, as optimally as it can. These things run when they want to, but they won't really hinder each other, especially when these pies now have stupid numbers of cores on them. That's basically my architecture. This is what we're going to try and sort out. We're going to build little bits of this. And it's going to be quite a long episode, I think, but it's going to be a fair amount of code. And if I do it right, I won't have to run it too many times to get rid of any typos that I might put in. Uh, I'm probably not going to do the config this session because I'm not going to do any views which require the config. I am going to bring this web server up. I am going to make this interface here. I am going to throw away most of the code we wrote last session, and that's perfectly okay. Um, and you'll see why when we do it. All right, so I previously tested the web server. Let me just give it that. So <laughs> this is the code as it was last session. I'm just going to take a copy of that for the moment. And the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to see if we can bring up the um, uh, the module which will be our uh, uh, our base interface. Now Python doesn't really have um, ooh got a name in there. Does Python doesn't really have a um, uh, an interface type system? And I know what, I'm not too I'm not too sad about that. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I really would like an interface. Because Python is, is dynamically typed, it does have types. Um, I have this argument with people about types. Doesn't mean I don't like them. Do like interfaces. So we're going to call a thing called base mode. Um, base mode. I'm going to call it base mode. I like my classes to be in the same name as the folder. I could make one file called init mode, but all my modes there. I want to separate them out. So this could be base mode. Modes dot base mode dot base mode. Uh, go figure. Um, so basically what we're going to do in here, we're going to actually not just use it as an interface, I'm actually going to write this as a, a nice class. So, um, oh I haven't built clacks yet, we're going to have to build clacks. I'm going to have to explain the clacks as well. Let's just put them here. Um, so I'm going to overload in it. I'm going to basically, I think I can get away with everything having the safe in it. Previously I didn't, but because I'm going to put settings in, to the clax module, then basically in in it they could pull their own um, um, uh, uh, settings out of this. Whereas previously, when I built this once before, I actually had each in it had a different initializer, so I could pass values in. You'll see when we come to do some cool security camera stuff why that was really important. Um, so after clax, it was clax and self dot size equals size. I wanted to put the size there. We might come back and actually have a resize function later. Um, that may happen when I start doing dynamic screens to actually be able to reset the base size, which will destroy any local cache you've got. That's fine. Um, I want there to be two functions which are uh, enter and exit screen. So if you are the current screen, when you become the current screen, enter screen will get called. When you stop being the current screen, exit screen will get called. Uh, and if you're doing any processing or anything in the background, you kill it on exit or you can start on enter. So you can reset your variables to the fact that you're now on the screen. If you're not on the screen, you see, um, it, we don't need to be doing processing. Uh, I said we're going to have to handle event. This only needs to take the event as a function. And by default, we're going to pass. And the very last one is uh, def render. Render that. So that's my basic base mode. Uh, I actually am going to make the clax object next because clax is going to be really, really important to me. So I use this in um, Pi in my Pi game that I'm building. This is Pi game, but we're building a game called in Pi game, not called Pi game. Um, the clax basically is a bunch of. By the way, some people are like, oh, why do you why do you do your code like this? And I'm like because it allows my uh, ID to know those variables exist. I set them to non because sometimes they'll be complex objects, uh, and then define them in the init function. And I can also, at this point, put doc strings on them. Um, and this will be. So, first of all, we're going to use custom events. So, I want there to be someone to register the custom events so they have the same value. Their custom events in Pygame are basically, effectively, they're an object which has an integer. And the, the which is the type, and the type integer is a number which just counts up. So you register a custom event, 
and it just gives you the next number and it means that is the next number but you've got to know that number everywhere so you can hard code them in but you don't want you want you want to dynamically register them when you start the program um so i'm going to stick them on here against names it's going to be a dictionary uh and you'll see me register those in a moment um we're going to use we're going to move the alive function because i actually would like the web server to synchronize with this as well there is going to be some difficulty to that i'm not going to get on to killing the web server you got to control c it twice unfortunately at the moment um I'm also going to move the clock into here, and the reason I'm moving the clock into here is because the web server, one of the functions I want to do is a stats function, which will ask the clock what our, our, our current time is. Um, and also, I actually am going to have to store a reference of the web runner. Um, no, I'm not. Ignore that one. We'll come back to that one. That may or may not become a thing. Okay. And this is going to take um, absolutely no arguments, or whatever. The self dot uh, custom, which is going to leave it as an empty dictionary for the moment. Like that. Okay, there we go. Nice simple clacks. So that will get stored in here. We're going to store copies of it everywhere. We're only going to make more of them. I haven't made it a singleton. Uh, I'm going to pass it into various places, and that's going to work really nicely. So the first module we're going to make, and then we're going to throw away most of our code um, that we had last week, is going to be, I'm just going to make a very simple logo. I'm going to call it logo one because we're going to remake it because we're going to bring the lightning one back. Um, so uh, we're going to want Pi game because it's actually going to do some work. We're also going to go from dot base mode, import base mode. So here we have a class logo one base mode so this is going to have immediately inherit everything that we really had now um, one of the things I want to do is I don't want to be loading the screen up every time so I'm actually going to be um, I'm actually going to implement the enter screen function uh, I'm actually going to have a you're going to see me use a fair amount I'm actually going to have a, a, a local that's going to be my cache copy of my render okay so def uh, render It's going to return self dot render. So I'd not actually do any calculation these time room round through. Over here, I'll go if self dot render equals none. Now the reason I'm doing if self is because at the moment I've only got one screen, but the moment I start flipping out this screen and going back into it, when I call enter screen again, I'll I don't want it to just reload the images. I could do some call through an exit screen where I delete the local render. Um, and that would reset some memory, and I might do that in the future, but the moment goes based, and this would be future compatible at this point. So if the render's not been done already, it's basically going to self dot render equals pi game dot image dot load. And at the moment my asset's still there. Wow, that wind is really really blowing. Um, asset slash lightning slash ie dash one dot png. Okay. So that's basically going to load it on the first time. The image is going to be loaded in memory. I'm not going to re-render it continuously. So it's going to be returned to this render function. Nice and simple. Nothing to go wrong so far if I haven't, so far if I haven't made any typing mistakes, which I don't think I have yet. Uh, any mistakes I make are purely accidental. So in this Pi game, I'm basically going to break this down into three or four methods. I'm going to change this to the future to pull some things from config so I can go full screen and not full screen. Because I keep having to mod it when I put the big things full screen. Right. So I do something called comment based programming. So I'm just going to lay out my program a little bit here. So, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, do an initial setup and throw things on the screen. The clock isn't here anymore. So what I actually want to do is we're going to want to import. Uh, from clacks import clacks. Okay, don't want random anymore. That's gonna go. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. So we're gonna do clacks equal clacks clacks dot clock equals clock. So the clock is now set. Uh, the screen can go there. That's fine. Uh, we're gonna get rid of all this. It's in the copy, so it can go. And the alive is already set up as well. Okay, and we also get a bit of lightning. Good start. This is going to be part two. It's going to be uh, now load everything else. 
And you're going to see me do some imports in some funny places. And I'm going to defend that in a moment. And then part three is enter the mega loop. All right. So you shouldn't really, when you write Python, you should really put all your imports at the top, not half down the body. Now there are exceptions to that rule, and this is one of those exceptions. So in this, this is my main program. So what I want to do here is I want to do from modes dot logo one import logo one, and I will be doing more imports in here. So what I'm doing is basically just getting enough up and running to actually bootstrap to get something on the screen. Um, and then I'll worry about the rest later on because importing all the other modules, setting them all up, they may have, they may do things on load which are slow and I want to get something on the screen as fast as possible so I was looking at it gets that immediate response whilst I'm loading other stuff in the background. So logo one's up and running. Uh, I have to do a little bit more so I'm actually going to have a thing called screens, um, it's going to be a dictionary and I'm going to have a thing called current screen. Um, and the current screen is going to take clacks, and I think it takes the size of width and height. That was what gets passed in on in it, right? Uh, it was in base mode actually. Uh, clacks and size, there we go, nice and easy. And then screens, like that, screens equals uh, logo uh, current screen. And we're going to use this in future to reference it when we start moving around screens. So having a dictionary of screens is really useful. Now, what we're going to do really quickly is before we go away, we're actually going to call, we're going to force the first enter screen. So because all the work for me has been done enter screen, um, and then I'm just going to paste that in because I had it prepped. Um, screens uh, logo dot render. Now that actually will render it, but I need to actually put it with it. So it'd be screen dot Lit the output from there, which should be an image, and I want it to go to naught, naught because I want it to go to the top left. And really important, and it's so easy to forget this I want to flip the display, which means at this point we should have the logo on the screen, and then it will enter this mega loop. So I'm just going to delete all this here. So what we should see, we should see it flash up, and then because it goes into here, it's going to be deleted again because we're not doing anything else with it. Okay. So hopefully, you didn't see that. Uh, also, however, you did see that because uh, it went onto the wrong screen. I think I mentioned previously I'm having a problem with uh, display equals up here, and there is a reason for that. Actually, I'll come back. And I'll just fix that in a second. Um, here, this alive is no longer alive. This is now clax dot alive, and that is also uh, clax dot live, which also means that is clax dot alive, and that is clax dot live. Um, there's a line we didn't put in last time, and it's kind of important up here. You need to put this pi again in it. Uh, really, really super important line of code. Uh, if you don't do that all kinds of problems will occur. Um, so, let's remember me again. Oh. Uh, Clacks.clock. Um, now, bizarrely, I'm having a still phone problem there, so I'm just going to do a display equals... I'm going to guess at 2. Uh, there we go. It's sort of appear, sort of disappear, exactly as we intended works exactly as we want, got our typers out of the way, job done. Now the idea in this loop here actually is it will do screen, um, it will, basically we're going to copy that line there, but it's not going to be screens, it's going to be current screen. So whatever is the current screen, it will render, blitz it on, no problems whatsoever. Um, so this now should work you know, stupid number of frame seconds doing absolutely nothing. Don't really need this loop, but we are. Job done. Uh, we might even be able to return a true false in that and do some cool in future. Um, but I'll have to see. I, if there's nothing changed, it won't do the fill. And that could actually do a call optimization. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. So if nothing's changed since the previous time you returned, you just have a dirty flag. Let me think that through my noggin. 
not many screens will be like that because most screens will want to do an animation or what I want is most screens to do an animation even if it's just something simple so I don't think that's actually worth putting in even things like the clock um, when I do a clock one it's going to update every second so it's probably not worth doing that just yet because the clock may still have a cool uh, smooth animation even if it's going to have the time and ticks one second a smooth analog animation there will be quite cool <sighs> that's where we're at we're at 24 minutes We've completely destroyed our code, but now we have it modulus. Now what we can do is we can move a lot of the display modulus into this uh, code over here. Look at that. Um, and this is going to, uh, or over here, and this is where we can bring all that lightning effect code back. We can drop it on there into this render function. It's out the way of our control function for the main thing. Now I did say I wanted to bring a web server in, and then the web server we're going to use, we're actually going to use uh, a thing called AsyncIO. Uh, and we're going to use AIO -A HTTP. So we're going to call this file web server .py. Um, Now, this is going to be some magic. Now, I'm not coding this on the fly. Don't be, don't be confused by this. I have built this before. Uh, I have built this twice in the past year, I think. Um, or oh, I built something very, very similar. So I'm going to use AsyncIO, and AsyncIO is one of the wor hardest words I have to spell because it hasn't got an H in it. There we go. Um, from A I O H T T P, import web, um, import threading, because we're going to want threading, and we're also going to want Pygame. I'll say why we want Pygame in this, the web server. Um, this is one of the most important things we're going to do. Um, so basically what we're going to do, the way to AsyncIO works is basically define a handler. Now I'm going to use the root system in this one. I'm going to use the decorator method in this one. Um, and we will see how well that works out. I might take that out in a future version. Um, but what you do first of all, you define the app, so your web .application. By the way, I'm having a war on globals, uh, as people should. Um, uh, root table def. So the root table def is again a thing from the documentation from the from the AIO HTTP documentation. This is how you do it. So what you need to do is do roots as a decorator dot get and then I'm going to put a um, slash in there so we have to on the slash uh, async async def handler request. So this is going to handle my request print hello but also I'm going to respond with a return. And because I'm only really interested in doing JSON responses, all my things are going to be JSON. Now, what's interesting here is if I wanted to do real web pages, I would probably serve those out of a Nginx container or do something like a Flask or a Django front end, which then talks to this or any other of your favorite things. I wouldn't have this serve the static content. This is only going to do APIs. And I'd always buffer that from the real world via an Nginx. And probably like something like Cloudflare as well to take out all kinds of injection attacks. So I don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, you want to write your code that doesn't have injection attacks, but also you want to minimize the risk against you anyway. Especially if you're working with such a low level web server like this. Um, and basically that's going to be my handler, which is, you know, a super, super fun handler. Now the next one, my uh, def main, this is going to be, again, uh, this is just boilerplate code, which you just have to accept is right. Uh, so at this point we're going to add the roots that have been defined. I'm going to put all my, the web, uh, my, my web functions in here. Um, so I'm going to add the roots which have been defined at this point by those things in there. Uh, I'm going to grab, um, I've missed a bit, which uh, it's going to come last, okay. How to explain this? You, you you have to sort of know how this works, okay. So I need the clacks here. Um, I Do I need the clacks here? I don't know. Web runner equals web dot app runner. App, so that gets passed into web runner and then await uh, web runner dot setup. This is code from the A I O H T T P site. A uh, site equals um, web dot tcp site clacks dot web runner. 
and then they did local host. I'm gonna put 0.0.0.0 in here because I wanted to respond on, on the public IPs of my computer, which are private to my network, so other things on my network can talk to it. Uh, it's gonna go and put 8080 for the moment. Might change that in future. These things should be coming in from a settings file, um, which I don't have yet, because this is very early days in the program. Uh, await site to start, so that's gonna start up nicely. Um, they recommend shoving a nice print line. I'm going to copy this print line because it's, it's quite nice. That's live, of course, because it's going to be listing on other ones, but it will be on Montes and not on other ones as well. And what they do is they should sleep for a very long time. And I don't really know what happens when it runs out. I guess when it runs out, it stops running. But we're not going to be running it for quite that long. Because that's 100 hours. I suspect I reboot my pies more often than that. Def. And now what we're going to do here, we actually need to be a background thread. So the reason we're doing this method, not the other way, is so that I can actually put it into a separate thread. So the first thing I want to do is async io dot new event loop. So I now have an event loop to be able to run off. Um, dot set event loop. So here is the event loop set. And then basically, at, I don't need to do that. Uh, I need to try loop dot run until until complete main like that with the brackets on which always surprised because when you do threading you wouldn't have put the brackets they pass the arguments as a separate argument finally loop dot close now uh, I'm doing this so if any exception scores loop is closed correctly that's my nice background thread this basically stops it being async at this point or it is still async but it takes async out thing so I can now knock up my web server uh, here. So the web thread uh, x equals threading dot thread target equals uh, background thread x dot start print web server thread started. Now I want to print that off here because if I've messed it up and done it wrong, it won't actually return and this won't print. So it's really important that, that prints. Save that, go back to the run me. Here, in part two, I'm going to import the web server. Now because this does things, it actually may go wrong, which is fine. It's doing things outside the outside the main edit function. Um, so web server dot run web server like that. Hopefully crashed uh, because I did a typo on the word application. Okay. So that's running nicely. Uh, if I open up a web browser over here, I've got one. Uh, local host con 8080. Uh, that actually refused to connect. We have a look what happened wrong there. So, oh, I put a clax in somewhere. Hmm, I was considering this. So, so in the prototype I had before I passed the clax in, I passed the clax in because you're going to need that. You, basically, the web runner will have to be in the clax so I can call stop. So the way I close this down cleanly, which is which is quite difficult actually to, to do. Or I have found quite difficult to do. Um, so I'm just going to take that out for the moment. I'm going to come back and, and see this is a work in progress. Uh, again, that's running nicely. Uh, where has my web browser gone? Still get an error here. Again, I get a clacks error. Where have I got clacks in here? There. See, I was copying. Uh, past the web runner there, web runner, web runner, web runner. I said uh, the, clack, the web runner should be in the clacks. Really. Run that again. I get the OK back. Notice the quote marks around because, of course, a string, when you put it into JSON, will have quote marks around it to make a JSON string. That's perfectly valid. And I got a little hello there. Okay, so we now have that running. This is running. They're running. They're completely separate. They can't talk to each other. Life is good. Now we want to do is be able to push one event into the other event's thread. And I will now demonstrate that for you. So I'm going to hit pause here for a second so I can grab a drink, though because uh, talking non-stop for several minutes, 34 minutes, All oh, right, we are back, and we are back with a glass of water so we can crack on with these fun things. 
Uh, again, apologies for any wind noise we have in the background. That is just what we're going to put up with today. It is very, very windy out there. I'm not surprised my hair is all, all completely on the wrong side because of the wind. I'm going to get a drink. Um, so basically what I want to do is I want to now show how to take an event from the web thread and throw it into the Pi game loop so we actually have it. And we are not going to use globals. That is the key number one. Uh, the main thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to use those Pi game events. And the Pi game events queue is basically like any other queue you might use, like a Redis or a SQSQ or something like that. Um, but it's in memory and it's local, so it's fast. So it probably doesn't have the same kind of resilience. You can't do funky things like root things everywhere. But it does work really nicely for what we're doing. So it's a first in, first out queue. Um, and it works nicely. So what we're going to do is you've got the Pi game event queue here. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to introduce a, a new um, element of the root. Before I import the web server, I'm actually going to get all of the events registered. So basically, this loop is now going to have a for loop in it. Um, and if you remember rightly, I, I made a dictionary over here of events. So we're going to say for uh, key val in uh, clax dot custom events dot items because it's python uh, clax dot custom events key equals pi gain dot event dot custom event to so a custom type and that will basically generate now you don't want to be generating you ideally don't generate too many of these you don't want like a hundred of these you want a few basic ones but then what you should do is you should subclass it or put other modules on those things So because so, you can add your own data term. So you can basically say this is a net event and you go to a subtype of uh, web request or this is an API event or this is a message event or whatever. Uh, so that works nicely. Uh, what you can, I say works, I haven't run it yet. Over here now, I can now start putting these in. Now they're going to be registered to none because I haven't defined them, they haven't been called on the register yet. Uh, so the first event I'm going to do is just uh, I'm going to throw an event type here, message. Okay. Really nice and simple. Um, when that comes in, no, no, I'm going to have a um, um, net event. Or that. Just net event. General net, a general net event. When that occurs, we want to do something. So over here, we're now going to uh, basically just uh, print it off. So if event dot type equals at this point it won't be a pi game dot something it'll be clax dot custom events square bracket net event then print message received okay so we're going to get that message over there if if the event is passed between the two threads we go back to the web server now and really nicely here again. This is why I want clacks. This is why I want clacks. So bring the clacks in here. We're going to bring the clacks in here. We're going to bring the clacks in here. We're going to go back to the run me. We're going to bring the clacks in there. This here needs to actually do an extra line. And the extra line is going to be you can basically add things to the app context. Um, where <laughs> it, 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 it's bizarre, but you can do that. Okay, now here I can't do app, I haven't got a reference to app, even though it's there, I haven't got a reference to it. Okay, and you don't use globals, don't, don't leap to using globals. Uh, the correct response to do here is you can actually get the app by doing request.app. So the request.app clacks. Can be done. I can do that everywhere I like in all these all these functions inside these handlers. Um, now, what I like to do is I like to port the event type equals clax dot custom events uh, net event like that. Grab that event type. Then down here I can do pi game dot event dot post ev. And I can also do data in a in a dictionary if I want to pass data as well. But I'm just going to pass the event. No, no, hold on. Uh, ev equals pi game dot event post. Oh, I want to actually make an event object where 
event type is there, and I can pass a dictionary. So I can pass in like something. Uh, uh, something is there. Like that pass a dictionary. Something. I pass that event into the message. So this is this is basically dropping onto the queue. This is just generating the event I want to happen. So what's going to happen now is going to run it. There can be no mistakes whatsoever. Looks good. So what we're going to see here is we're going to see the web request received, and then we're going to see a, a message be print off from the PyThread uh, loop, the main loop in question. So I'm just going to hit on the web browser now. Message received. So we've successfully passed the message from the web thread to the front thread. Okay, that's really cool. I also, though, while we're here, I'm just going to make another API really, really quickly because we now almost have everything in place because we have clacks now. So I'm just going to copy this and actually I'm going to move all these onto API uh, slash API slash um, stats with a slash on the end. I've decided I'm going to put a slash at the end of my APIs. We shall have this argument later. Grab the clacks. I'm not going to post an event on this one. What I'm going to do is do data. So I'm going to return here. I'm going to do data equals a dictionary. And the first thing I want to return here is FPS. And I want to do um, clacks dot clock dot. Oh, I'm just going to check the documentation because it's got a bit of a weird name. Yep, it has get FPS. There we go. So that should return that. Drop that into the, the web response. It's going to register itself nicely. Control C that again. So I haven't got the shutdown routine quite killing the web server at the same time as killing the, um, the one. Over here, I should be able to slash API slash stats. Bang, FPS. And you can see it's varying just under 15 frames a second. Which is expected, it's not actually doing anything. And I've locked it, if you remember rightly, uh, I locked it at the bottom here to 15 frames a second. So that's really nice, and that's showing data almost going the other direction as well. Uh, and again, I could cache information in the clacks or things that the API could ever see. Why I'd want to get data out of this, I don't know, except for maybe I say what's the current current screen that's on display, I don't know. But but that that goes in both directions. Um, Mostly really nicely, job done. Right. Whew. Let's now build a separate mode. Let's have a, a this is going to be a, a bit of fun. <laughs> this is all a bit of fun. I don't know why I, I, I think it's not. The next mode I want to build is going to be a text mode. And I'm going to want to put a message on. So I'm actually going to make an API, I'm going to throw a message on, I'm going to render it onto the main screen. So the first thing I'm going to need up here is I'm actually going to need a new folder called fonts. Fonts, plural, singular. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's a thing there. I don't know if I'm going to commit this file. When I commit this, I'm going to bring a terminus font in because I like the font. It is a free open source font, but I don't think that allows me to redistribute or I don't want its license to affect me. So I'm just going to drop in an invisible file here as well. Um, this is here to hold the folder open download the open source fonts independently independently there's a spam mistake there also my glasses are a bit weird oh, vision always worrying about having stroke but you know it should be okay anyway this is the font we're going to have and what we're going to do now is we're going to make a new um, a new mode okay so brand new node new file new file and it's going to be called message.py. I've got a suspicion these should all be lowercase. Um, and I, I'd be very bad calling big ones. So we're going to import pygame as well. Uh, we're going to do from uh, pygame fonts have to from a different package. So from pygame.font import font like that. Um, we're going to want date time and time delta. Uh, and we're also going to want base mode. All right. Whew. Have a big sip of water. So 
This one's going to be uh, a little bit different in that um, we're going to have the render up here, and we're going to have a font as well. Uh, and the, re the the render and the font are going to store your uh, basic information about about the font is actually going to be the loaded font, so we can use it to make the render. Uh, I'm also going to want to have a date run until. Um, so this is going to want to have an enter screen because I don't want it to go horribly wrong if things if events get slightly out of order here. Um, I, I do want that to pair. So if self dot render equals non. Unlike the other situations where we've actually loaded an image, we're actually going to make a surface for the first time from scratch. So self dot render. When you do an image load, it actually returns a surface. You see, not an image anymore. It actually is a surface which you can draw on. So it's basically think about the base layer of of whatever you're going to do. Um, I'm going to render equals pi game dot surface. Now the surfaces take a size. We happen to have size in because it is in the base mode as size. That's why I put it there. Everything is now how big it's going to be. It's also I'm going to pass it in this one source alpha. Now these are option flags, and basically you can add up the flags and do cool stuff with them. Well, that basically means it's going to have uh, a transparency to it. I want to do that because I might have this screen rendered over the top of other screens in future, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I also want to instantiate the font for the first time. So this is going to be an asset slash font slash. I'm going to get this name wrong. Um, it's bin night. That's my alarm for the bin night. Um, so I'm just going to send a message wave. Musical alarm for bin night. Ha! What a great interruption. In this wind, they're going to get blasted away down the street. Um, I believe it's green bin night for those of those interested. I'll let you guess what green bin means in my area of the country, but you know. Uh, message of fonts, it's got terminus ttf hyphen bold hyphen 4.47.0 dot ttf. There we go. Um, some people rename the fonts. I like to have the same name of the fonts and download it, if I download another one later or a newer version of it, then, you know, whoever's made 47 variants of this font, I am very, very impressed. It is a really good font. It's a really good console font, actually. Um, uh, render text equal... Oh, I haven't done um, again, this is actually a module that I've already built, just so you guys go from, from the Antiscape game where I have a screen where you can just display text, like you have died or uh, error, and I can display errors on it. Um, we actually do need to implement that now though. Def render text. Uh, technically it should be a private because it's going to be, there we go, private magic. <laughs> I, do mi I do miss private sometimes, like most of my stuff I wouldn't make private, but occasionally you do really want a private function. So, um, basically, when you do a render, self.render.fill, I want to fill this with blanks. I said this, I was going to be alpha in future. That needs to be underscore there. Fill, render. It's got to take a colour, naught, 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 under 255, so it actually fills it in fully. Uh, rendered text. This is going to take text as a message. Equals self.font, because the font should be established now before we call this function. Um, uh, text that you've been passed in. It's going to take true as the second argument, and then it's going to take a colour. I'm going to do naught, 255, naught, because we're going to have cyberpunk, fluorescent green. Now, render text is actually a surface in its own right, but it's not the same size as the screen. It's actually just big enough to fit the text in. So what we want to do now is work out where to render that onto the render, which actually is the size of the full screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out top and left. But I'm going to work out the left first uh, because I always work out the top first and it really confuses me when I put them in backwards because you want to work out across, so it's across down the hallway, up the stairs, or in this case down the hallway, down the stairs because top left is top left. Right, top uh, top left equals right, the self dot size, which I want the first element, so obviously it's zero, obviously, divide by two. Double slash because I want an integer output, otherwise do single slash, then do integer dot floor or math dot floor, and then math dot floor gives you a decimal, then you do int and math dot floor, or you just do double slash. Uh, minus rendered uh, text um, dot get width. And again, the width here is a total width, but I want from the middle, I don't want it to be 
all the way to the left, so divide that by two as well. Just so you guys know, that's the equivalent of saying self dot size naught divide by two, as I was just saying, this would be math dot floor that, and then it would be um, int that sort of thing, that, that sort of thing, you don't want to do that. Uh, the top is basically the same, t top equals a t for temporary, yeah. self dot size one divided by two minus rendered text dot get height divided by two. Uh, I don't like doing that. I do sometimes like things lined up, but don't. Uh, it's a miracle I put in space in here. I don't normally. I don't know why I did today. Uh, because I wouldn't if it was a divide symbol. So, looks a bit strange having all these these symbols like that in a row. Looks a bit weird, but it's right. right and then what we do is self dot render render dot blit. And we're going to put blit the render rendered text onto the background which is self.render, and it's going to go to T left, T top, which puts it bang in the middle. Trust me, that's bang in the middle. <clears throat> so here we can now do render self.render text. Um, hello, no text given. I know that. Now I did miss a thing here. That there should have had a font size. Uh, let's go for 72. Now uh, I actually want to do maths because um, for uh, put those to fix me. Come back and fix that. Because I actually want to make it just the screen smaller, pick a smaller font or anything else. You also kind of need to know how big the text is going to be if you're going to do word wrapping. Not going to do any of that. It's going to be very simple, right? Whoo! Def dot render. Def render self. Okay, we're getting there. If self dot <laughs> so I want to do two things in this. So this just just return self dot render. Yeah, job done. I actually want to do a couple of things in here. I only want to show the message for a few seconds before flipping back to whatever it was doing in advance. I don't want the message to be stuck up there once the message has come forever more. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to introduce a new thing here called run until equals none. And then in the enter screen, I'm going to do uh, always outside the loop because every time I enter screen, I'm going to reset this thing. Self dot run until equals date time dot now plus time delta seconds equals uh, three. Right? You get three seconds of message. No matter how long the message is, you have to read fast. Um, <laughs> they're going to be short messages. It's going to be fine. Uh, self dot render. So now what we're going to say is if the self dot run until is less than date time dot now i if the the run until has passed because we're now in the future um we're actually going to send an event so we're going to go back to clax we're going to register a new event and we're going to have this uh i'm going to call it resume be really cool so again we can just copy out of the web server these lines of code here drop them in there make sure all the tabs are correct because why the hell not uh, so these are going to be this is going to be the resume and there's no reason to pass in messages in here okay nice and simple gets us where we want to be um, is what it is so this is going to send a resume event back to the main thread <sighs> otherwise it's going to render it Job done. I also, uh, it's called handle event. This takes a mess, uh, takes an event. Now, this is going to be a bit buggy to begin with, and we'll fix it in future. I do know how to fix it, I just don't want to right now um, because uh, I'm going to use the net event, I'm going to slap the message on there. So I'm just going to try it. Uh, so self dot render text uh, event dot message to go for it. L except self dot render text bad message. Print e. There we go. Put 
put my monitor printer off just so I know what the exception was. Otherwise, I might be. Might never fix it otherwise. Um, I actually could do it if the event type equals net, send, net event. I actually want to make, make a message type and I'll come back and fix that later. Possibly not in this episode. This episode is already like 50 minutes long. So here we are and what we are going to do now is not quite run this because we have to go back to our main, main, main thread. Close that, close that, close that. In here, we're not doing anything with this event. If it's a net event, if it's a general net event, I could have it as a message event, make sure it gets past the message. But I'm going to say current pygame dot display. Now, I'm actually going to change that to message. So, it's a now a message. I'm going to change it in the web server up here. Um, and basically, this section here is going to be a little bit more interesting and you're going to have to sort of bear with me on how this loop works. What's going to happen here? So the current screen, whatever the current screen is, at the moment it's probably going to be the logo, but it could be the message, it could be another screen that's future. Um, we're going to call exit screen on it, which shouldn't do it at the moment, it's not going to do anything, it should go do pass which is fine message have I actually instantiated the message I have not instantiated the message screen so I've missed a step up here uh, in this section here from modes dot message import message uh, screens message uh, equals message uh, I think I have to put clacks with height that there we go here screens message we're going to do uh, dot enter screen that ah. in fact we're going to do current screen equals screens message then we're just going to do current screen I don't want to type that out every time uh, current screen end screen current screen dot handle event event and then current screen dot that's it that's it because this is then going to call render as it, it's now the current screen assuming there was any other thing in the queue that should work so let's just check that again this is basically a call end screen it's going to set this into the future render won't get called on the second time round because the handle event will then set the text so you won't actually be calling that every single time but type it there so let's see if this works. Go back to the web server a second. It's going to do it on the slash. I'm going to change that to API message in the future. Um, but let's just see if that works. So we've got that there. I'm going to call on the slash. I get an internal server error. Yay! Key error message. Which suggests that I didn't save that file. I didn't hit save there. Let's do it again with hitting save everywhere. Call on the slash. Got an OK. So a quick look see what happened. Render text takes one position argument, but two are given, which suggests here that render text is a inner function should have self as the first argument. One more time. Got an error. Uh, pygame.font.font is not callable. Uh, which suggests that this line here isn't quite right. Pygame.font.font pygame.font.font is not callable. That there should be a valid font line. The error is self dot font text true not not not. Let me just check my code against uh, somewhere else. I've done it and find the right function. As you can see, I write code a fair amount, and yet I can't even sometimes get this right. Um, that looks right to me. Type error. Type. Someone talking about types the other day. I don't have to get tires. The pygame font dot font is not callable. Oh, you know what it is. Uh, my import's wrong. No, it's not. From pygame font import font. I did put the init function. This really messes up functions. Did put that in there. Um, Ooh. 
Ooh. Sort of font text too. Oh. That's how you use a font. The font object itself, you can't call, you can't say font and then use that as a, it's not a, it's not itself a constructor. Um, you come in there, there you go, bad message. And the reason we get a bad message there, and after a couple of seconds, it should go back. So the next thing we haven't done is here, we actually declared a new type, which was resume. And again, we're gonna need to work out this a little bit and we're going to go back to resume our. We're going to go back to logo at that point, and it should go back after three seconds. Uh, this end clax is not defined. Clax is not defined because it shouldn't be clax; it should be self dot clax. Uh, and the other thing was in the web server, we didn't put message. We had something. So I'm going to put the word message there. That should all line up now. Um, everything should go nicely and it's going to have the phrase it's going to have the phrase something is there so I call that you get something is there three seconds disappears call that something is there three seconds disappears all right we'll go leave it there for the moment as you see I made to make a web request which actually causes something to happen on the screen so we've got the async web worker we've actually got two modes of operation two completely independent screens with the ability to flip between them, we have the ability to flip back again with that reset event. Um, the imagination is really to go forward from this is what's the next screen we build, and it's going to be those YouTube stacked counters, going to bring the lightning effect back in. I'm going to do all that off camera because I just want to move this forward now. Uh, but effectively, what we have is a much stronger framework, a much stronger architecture to build upon for the next episode. Um, as before, if you like this, please hit like, subscribe. I'm sorry it's such a long episode. Um, there are some other episodes. The last episode was about Pi Game. If you've got any questions at all, please hit me up. Uh, you can put a comment down here and I'll respond to it, or you can hit me up on Twitter uh, or on Discord as six subscribers. I know exactly who you are. Please feel free to share this with your friends. I realise it's a long episode. It goes into a bit of depth about how to do some things. And hopefully we'll see you all again another time.